Hey everyone, and let's get started with module six of the Yandex Python tutorials. This one's going to be over data preprocessing. Sorting out the garbage. Okay, so analysts usually spend a good chunk of their time pre-processing data, otherwise there would be no way for them to arrive at any reasonable conclusions. What you'll learn, we'll familiarize ourselves with the most common forms of garbage data in addition to the specialized method of pandas that we'll use to deal with them. And we'll continue working with the index music. Gigo. You're not the only one who has to be well prepared when working on analysis. The data also has to be ready. Getting data ready for analysis is called pre-processing, which includes identifying problems with data with the data set and resolving them. Let's keep in mind that the GIGO golden rule, garbage in, garbage out. In other words, even the best algorithm will return inadequate results if there are any mistakes in the data input. Take a look at this slice of data that we'll use for our task. Okay. What catches your eye right off the bat? There are two separate names for the same genre in the genre category, relax and relaxation. If we leave it the way it is now, we'll get individual return results from relax and relaxation, even if there's no real difference between them. Since they are both ref referencing the same thing, we won't be able to get an accurate reading for how many users actually listen to relaxing music. We have to take the garbage out of the data, so our GIGO acronym actually stands for gold in, gold out. Looking beyond the contents of each individual column, you could face an issue with the headings. You already know how to pull data from table columns, e.g. in order to calculate the number of unique users. So let's try to gain access to the user ID column. A first glance tells us that we've entered the column heading correctly, although when taking a closer look, we uncover spaces at the beginning. This usually happens due to the human error. Someone could have tapped the spacebar when naming the columns or copied extra spaces from the task description. Another possibility is that the headings were pulled in that state from an information system. Each column is different. One is okay, the other has five spaces at the beginning, and one at the end, and the third has three spaces be at the beginning. It's tricky to eyeball the number of spaces in between a to write a precise rule that would dispose of them. However, copying the characters you want by hand each time is far worse. This is actually a major issue and it's the major, major reason why they teach you how to eliminate extra spaces as soon as you spot them. There are a couple of pitfalls when it comes to data. There is some garbage that weaseled its way into the data. The data itself is accurate, it's just being presented in a manner that makes analysis virtually impossible. For example, a table with data on the distances between Earth and various celestial bodies and millions of kilometers could be presented in two ways. Which option do you presume, presume is more suited for analysis? Hunting for garbage. Oh. There's no easy way to tell which purpose each row serves in the upper table, although things are much more straightforward in the lower one, it's more practical in each of the column stores values for a single variable. Then each row can contain one observation that different values can be attributed to. The rows in the lower table can be presented as observations of a celestial body. The variables connected to it will be its name, its minimum and maximum distance from Earth. The upper table isn't completely hopeless. We can use it for a visual report. International organizations often publish their yearly data like this. As far as how data is organized, the index music manager has handed us a rather adequate table, although there's still some garbage hiding inside. There are a few things to, to do. Can you check out the first 10 rows? Do you see anything unusual? So we notice the not a number here, if that looks unusual, and it happens multiple times here. So it's like uh, data is missing in those categories. Let's see if they come up with anything else. We already know about the problem with the column headings. Now note the repeating values. There's something documented as NAN, which is clearly not a band. We also have to dig into rows one and two since they're utterly redundant. Analysts don't just clean up data, they also communicate with the rest of the team about newly found problems so they can get to the root of the problem. Each different kind of garbage appears in a table for a particular reason. In this chapter, we're going to look at the core tools for dealing with reoccurring garbage. Here are the most obvious as well as the most dangerous. Mislabeled columns, duplicate values, missing values, not a number. Learn how to deal with these problems is your first step towards putting the pro in pre-processing data. For starters, let's call the info method to take a closer look at the summary for the entire data set. Okay, so we want to use df.info. So let's hit play. To check that. Correct, next.
Please give us your personal thoughts so far. I will give it a happy. This is awesome. Okay, the info method returns the names of the columns as well as the information about the data types they contain. Here are some problems we found. There are a few extra spaces at the beginning of a column name which you have to get rid of. A name with two words has a space and we'll have to change it to an underscore. The name should all be in one case in order to avoid establishing a different format for every column. Every column contains a particular attribute and we want to make sure that the column name offers a brief glimpse at the information the column contains. Let's go back to our table with the distances and millions of kilometers between Earth and various celestial bodies. Oops. Notice the column names are in disarray. The celestial body's name has a menacing space at the end, and the words themselves are separated by a space. Anything that isn't basic Latin character poses a threat for an analyst that we have to address first. Celestial bodies has to be celestial underscore bodies, while min and max are allegedly okay. The abbreviations don't really tell us what the numbers in those columns represent. It could be a logical move to name them min distance and max distance that will tell us exactly what's happening. In order to change the column names, use the set access method. It accepts three arguments, a list of new column names, Axis the new names are assigned on, index if they're rows, columns if it's a list of column names. In place accepts true or false. In the first case, the set axis method rearranges the data structure so that it replaces the old one and variable with the same name. Let's replace the column names in the celestial body table. So you see they set axis and change it from celestial bodies to celestial underscore bodies, min underscore distance, max distance on the axis columns and in place true. Here are the results. Okay, so you can see now there's underscore here and it's min distance here and so on. Done, your table is now ready for analysis. Now let's check the column names in our Yandex music data. Okay, so we want to output the list of columns. So we should be able to do, let's see. Yeah, you should be able to print the data frame dot columns, right? I guess we can check that. Correct, next. Prepare the new names list with the new names for the columns. Okay, so new names is going to be equal to list with the attributes user underscore ID. Um, total underscore play underscore seconds artist underscore name genre underscore name track underscore name hit play and check it all right next now rename the columns of the table stored in the df variable called the set access method and give it new names list and set the value of in place argument as true. Okay, so we want to call new names. See how they did it real quick. Here we go. Um, df.set underscore axis. And then we feed it the new column name which is called new names and then we want axis to be equal to the columns because we're changing the column names and then they said put in place as equal to true okay so we can hit play here and check it correct next Check to see what you receive by requesting the columns attribute for our DF data structure. So now they want us to do DF dot um, columns again and probably print that. Okay, you can see it changed to our names now. Check that. Correct, next. Back now. 
So now working on five, when the column names that make up the coastline of our table are set, we can dive into the sea of data itself. Do you remember that the artist underscore name column had empty or missing values? So they print the first 10 here with the head method and um, we see that oh, none of those had nan in them. But if we go sideways, you can see the nan here, which is missing values. There are three ways we can replace the aforementioned missing values in data frame. Expected, none, or nan. None is the equivalent of null in other programming languages, a special value that shows there's actually no value for that table cell at all. It belongs to none type. Nan, not a number, tells us that there isn't a number in that cell. The main difference here is that you can use nan in mathematical operations as it's a number with a floating point. Strange. The, uh, these are the placeholders of a generally accepted standard, sometimes one you're unaware of, but which compilers adhere to. Most often that's NA, 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 not available, or N.N or NN from the Latin nomen nesio, or I don't know the name. Unexpected, for example, the developers may have decided that every empty value in the table should be filled with question marks or zeros. You'd hope that they would mention that in the documentation, but unfortunately you may have to figure it out by yourself. If you see a special symbol of number or number appearing a regularly appearing regularly without a clear explanation, chase are there stand-ins for missing values. Just be aware, zeros are sometimes just zeros, much like in the case of the data set for our task. Zeros mean that the track was skipped. In other words, we listened to it zero for zero seconds. Let's look at the options for dealing with missing values using the WHO cholera data from 2017. I guess that's World Health Organization. So import pandas, they read the CSV and they print this uh, table. And you can see they already have some not a numbers in the imported cases. So let's try and scroll through this. For different regions, the region column and the countries, we have a total number of cholera cases, including instances that were imported cases or deadly deaths. Uh, these are all whole numbers since we're looking at quantities of individuals. The case fatality rate column contains the percentage of fatalities float type where the notes column gives additional comments. In order to check each column for missing values, use the dot is null. If there is no value for an element, dot is null returns true. It returns false whenever there is a value. The call method sum sums up the, those true totals, returning the number of elements without disclosing their values. So do is null dot sum. When you're deciding which method you want to go with to wrestle with empty values, make sure you're keeping in mind that the overall business objective, what the overall business objective is. Basically, there are two ways: fill in the empty values with the data you have, or delete the rows with empty values. The business side of things is torn in between not wasting too much time and not missing out on valuable data. Uh, if we decide to delete all the rows with missing values, we could lose important data, e.g. there are 179,835 total cases in Africa and zero imported, currently marked as not a number. Deleting that row would mean losing data that is vital to our statistics. Europe is another story altogether. The entire row is nothing but missing values. According to the notes, not a single European was infected with cholera in 2017, meaning deleting that row would not affect our statistics at all. In order to avoid losing rows with important data, let's replace the NAN value in the imported cases column with zeros. Our best option is the fill in A method. Method, dealing with not uh, not available or um, where the argument is a substitute for the missing values. So see they're filling it with zeros here. The missing values in the column are now all zeros. Okay, you can see it's a zero instead of not a number. Let's see if we can scroll past that. Oh. Alternatively, we can use drop in a method in order to get rid of rows with. Uh, value zero. It deletes all the rows with at least one missing value. There are a few arguments for that method. Subset equals. Uh, the values here are the names of the columns in which you have to find the emissions. Our old friend in place is back. Okay. Let's try and skip. The scroll wheel is all funky when it's too small. Okay. Now delete the column on the right with the missing values, called the drop in a method again, just like we set access. If we assign columns value, it will delete every column at least with one omission. Okay, the table is now ready to be worked further. The omissions we don't need are now all gone. We've managed to hold on to all the important data. The, there are different ways for informational gaps to appear in the data. For example, users may not have entered everything about themselves or an automated system might have glitched. Things can sometimes be excluded on purpose with the assumption that they'd be filled in automatically with special symbols. Let's take a look at the missing values for data in the index music task. All right, so check out the info on the data set using the info method. So we do df.info. We can print that and check it.
correct. Next. Calculate the number of missing values and print it on the screen. So we do df dot, was it something get not a number? Is it like the top, the top here? Is null dot sum, right? You want to print that. Check that. Correct. We're going to have the same to save the contents of the genre name column if we're going to take care of the task the manager gave us. If the performer and track names are missing but we still have the genre, we will have to keep the row. Fill in the missing rows for the track name column with the string unknown. Okay, so we do df dot, let's see. Here we go. So df, they said in the genre name column, dot fill in a, with unknown. See if that works. Check it. Okay, so you have to do df equals df dot fill in a unknown. Check that. Fill in the missing values in the variable df. Oh, sorry, it says fill in the missing values for track name, not genre name. Check it. around with it for a little bit and yeah what I was actually doing is I didn't have uh, the the replacement column here I was I was basically filling this whole data frame with just this column right and so that's incorrect we're just trying to replace this specific column so um, basically we're reading the whole data frame in and then we're going to replace the single column track name with the single column track name filled with unknowns for every spot there's an NA Okay, and I don't think you have to print it here, but if you check that, it's what you get. It's going to replace the track names with unknown here, see? Okay, so we'll go next. Okay, so fill in the missing values in the column artist name with the word unknown. Okay, so df artist name equals df at artist name where you fill the NAs with unknown. Okay. Check that. Okay, and it says delete the missing values from the genre name column. Okay, so we do DF. It's probably going to be drop in a right let's see how they use that df dot drop in a axis equals columns oh that's not in quotes in place equals true So this isn't specifically, this will drop any, if there's an NA anywhere, but since we already fixed the ones in artist name and track name, supposedly all that's left is um, 
well, could be the genre name. So we could do that sum again and make sure that that's actually what's happening. So if we do um, df dot is null dot sum, this should tell us if there's any any other column. Yep, so you can see there's only nulls in the genre name column. So if we drop anywhere there's an NA, that's only going to be in the genre name category, and so we should be good. So let's check that. Oh, sorry, I, hit, I didn't hit next. If I do df.drop NA axis equals columns in place equals true. Check that. So yeah, it doesn't like that I did that. Okay, so we can just do at um, genre name dot drop in a, and we can do df genre underscore name. Actually, since it says in place equals true, you shouldn't actually have to assign it to anything. It should just automatically uh, work. So let's check that. See if we get rid of the axis if that's needed. Let's see if I'm doing this the wrong way. I feel like my what I did was equivalent the first thing I did but it's probably not what they want, so. So yeah, you can set it as the subset. Okay, so we'll just do that. So we do df dot drop in a subset equals genre name. in place equals true, let's check that. Correct, next. Now they just want us to do the info method. Check that. Next. Processing duplicates, what we refer to as duplicates are identical rows containing identical information. Those are obvious cases, we need to take them out, but there are also less apparent duplicates and categories that appear to be different from one another, for instance, politics and political situation. When we're aggregating data, these two categories will be displayed as individual subsets, even though we should be compiling everything that has to do with those politics into a single category. Despite the fact that Pandas has a lot to offer, it still takes a close examination, careful thought. Otherwise, you'll find yourself dealing with too many nasty surprises. Besides, the havoc duplicates can wreak on the results we receive. They also draw out analytical processes, heaps of reputation, uh, pointlessly paid uh, pad out tables, forcing us to spend more time processing data. We identify simple duplicate, duplicates by using the, the duplicated method, which returns a series with the value true. If there are duplicates, false if there aren't. To calculate the number of duplicates in the data set called the sum method, we have the drop duplicates method used for deleting duplicates. When you are when you call the drop duplicates method, the row continued repetitions are deleted, including their indices. That ruins the index sequence two follows, zero, etc. Keeping that in mind, we call drop duplicates as part of a chain, including the reset index method. A new data frame is created with the old indices converted to a regular column called index, and the indices for all the rows are once again in proper order. If we don't want to create a new index column, we need to assign the drop with the value true when we're calling reset index. That eliminates the old index values. The code serves, say, uh, that code saves a newly indexed table without duplicates to the DF variable. 
It's hard to hunt down duplicate category names, although it's not entirely impossible. In order to see all the unique values in the column, use the unique method. For example, ATP Tennis ranking of 2018 was updated 17 times, but there are far fewer players ranked at the top of the professional tennis world. If we apply the unique method to the second column, we end up only getting three names. In addition to Rafael Nadal, we also have Rafael Nadal Panera, or Pereira, which is his full name. We, that also counts as a duplicate, so we'll have to make, make them the same. Problems like that are handled using the replace method, where the first argument is the current value and the second is the one we want to replace it with. Now that everything looks neatly uniform, it's time to dive into duplicates of the index music data table. Save the current dimension of the table in the shape table variable. Okay, so we do shape underscore table equals df dot shape. Let's check that. Calculate and print the number of duplicates on the table on the screen. df.duplicates.sum, right? I guess we need to make these both a function. See if that's right. So it's not duplicates, what's it called? Here we go, duplicated. I also forgot to hit next, so I'll copy this and hit next and then paste it. Now it looks right, right? You got 4,011, the single number. Go check that. Delete the duplicates using the reset index method in order to save the index order. Okay, df.drop underscore duplicates in place equals true. I forgot to hit next. It says use the reset index method, okay? So, df.drop duplicates, no in place, dot reset index, drop equals true. We do df equals, check that. Correct, next. Save the table dimensions to the shape table update variable once you've finished deleting duplicates. Shape table underscore update equals df dot shape. Check that. All right, next. Compare the shape table and the shape table update variables if they are the same. Then print, okay, so if shape, oh, shape table equals equals shape underscore table underscore update print table dimensions unchanged current dimensions colon comma shape table update else We print the same thing, but with them being different. Table smaller, current dimensions. Okay, so we can play that and see. 
it was 4011 well I guess that was the number of duplicates it's but the I think it was like 6300 or something like that um, we can see it's, it's smaller so we check that correct next Okay, pull the unique values from the genre name column using the unique method. If we do df at genre name dot unique. Check that. They want us to print it. I guess I just wanted to print it. Okay. Replace the relaxation values with relax in the column genre name. Okay, so let's see how we replace here. Okay, so we do df at genre underscore name dot replace. Relaxation with relax. Okay, we need to do df at genre name replacing it equals okay we check that correct next check out the changes by recalculating the number of values equal to relaxation in the genre name calc column if you were successful replacing them all the result should be zero save that result in the variable genre final count and print it to the screen. Genre final count is going to be equal to let's see They tell us how to count it. See if we do df oh, I think we do df dot lock um, genre underscore name equals equals um, relaxation. Then we do dot sum, and then print genre final count. So I had this formatted wrong, but it's basically this. So I think it's uh back at all uh, you just do df 
at John or names equals equals relaxation and then take the sum of that and you get zero. And I checked it and it's correct, so I'll go next. And that's it. So we got rid of the worst of the garbage, gaps, repetitions. We were careful, which is why we made sure not to touch the composition playback time. The information we actually care about, we're finally ready to get down to analysis. What's next? What we have coming up next is the part of the job that's the most mathematical and most creative. This is where the research officially begins. We know what all we have to calculate, but I have no idea what results are going to be. What conclusion will we come to? It's hard to say, but it's so intriguing. So with that, uh, we'll do that next time. So talk to you guys later.